Good afternoon, everyone. Let me just say thank you as well for coming here. I know na sobrang lakas ng ulan kanina. Uh, hindi nga hindi natin alam kung titigil, but thank God, God is in control of everything. And I really, I'm really excited to be here because uh, we're about to continue our series, The Road Out. We are in the middle of our series right now. And my name is Christian Cornell. I'm one of the pastors here. And I'm really excited to preach today because I really believe God has something to do in our lives right now. He has a mission of transforming and changing lives. And I hope that as we dive into the Word of God, meron po tayo expectation, Lord, mangusap ka sa akin today. Lord, ikaw mismo ang kumilo sa akin and naniniwala ko na hindi tayo lalabas ng place nito not being transformed by Him because His name has a power to change lives. So we are in the current current series, The Road Out, pinag-usapan po natin dito yung book of Exodus, wherein we're talking about the story of God by using Moses to deliver the Egyptians. And there's so many things that had happened before sila na-deliver. And uh, the heart of the series for us to understand as well that the God that we are serving, is the power, He has the power to deliver us as well. And as He delivers us, naniniwala po ko, naniniwala ako na si God din yung maglilid sa atin to understand the very purpose God has for all of us. Sino dito naniniwala ka may purpose ka sa buhay? Yan. Tingin ka sa tabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, may purpose ka. Yan. So as we dive into the Word of God, let me just ask everyone to stand up and open your Bibles in Exodus chapter 8, verse 20. We only go, we're going to read one one verse lang. They're gonna explain everything at all kasi mahaba po yung context na babasahin natin dito. And if this is your first time, we would like to encourage everyone to, to at least meron po tayong screen dito so that you can follow us. But if you're coming here for the past how many weeks, I hope meron na po tayong na-download sa mga phones natin na Bible. And or kaya meron po kayong dalang sarili natin hard copy ng Bible so that you can follow us. So that once God uh, mag-speak sa'yo, pwede mong i-highlight to at hindi ka makiki-highlight sa katabi mo. Tapos sabi mo sa akin, tabi ulit tayo next week, ha? Okay, it says here, Exodus chapter 8, verse 20. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and, pre- and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and says to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for the reading of your word. I pray that you will use my mouth, you will use my tongue to speak life and encouragement. Lord, prepare our hearts. May you anoint the preaching of your word and may you soften our hearts' hearts and receive something from you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may take your seats. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to go back first para at least makafollow ulit tayo of what had happened. What had happened is that in Exodus chapter 1, this is the time wherein the Bible is telling us, now there, there, there arose a new king, king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Joseph has a relationship with God, but this time, meron na pong bagong king. At yung bagong king na to doesn't have a relationship with God and even those people that he's, uh, he's with. Sabi niya dito, and he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. To come, for us, come, let us deal swordly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join our enemies and our fight against, against us and escape from the land. The Bible's telling us that at the end of the day, the king has this vision already, that these Israelites are too many and too mighty. And it caused a lot of fear to that king na kapag lumaki to at dumami ng dumami to mga Israelites na to, ang mangyayari, baka sumama sila sa, kala- sa enemy namin at pag sumama sila sa enemy namin, ang mangyayari, matatalo tayo. So what had happened, nagkaroon po ng oppression and also population growth. So instead of, instead of letting the Israelites grow and grow, what they did, they enslaved them and they subjected them for, to a forced labor. Pinahirapan sila. To the point, slavery. Kung you're gonna try to look at it, hindi na po natin masyado narinig tong slavery na to. Kasi naalala ko lang, when I was in high school, eto na lang yung mga, ay, elementary yata to, at saka, at saka high school nga rin, yung mga 
uh, aliping sa gigilid. Ano naalala mo? Ayun po yung isa, meron pa isa. Aliping mamamahay. Yon, di ba? So, doon lang natin naiintindihan kung gaano katindi yung slavery. But this slavery is not just like that. Sobrang hirap po ng slavery na to because pinapahirapan sila, tinotorture sila dito, and not only that, they are demanding so much to the Israelites. And what had happened, they asked and they plead God asking for help. Have you ever had that moment wherein hirap na hirap ka na, feeling mo slave na slave ka na, tapos humihingi ka ng tulong sa Panginoon? Sa kanila po, mas matindi. Pagod na pagod sila to the point na they can't do anything because they are in slavery. And with that, what had happened, narinig ni God yung uh, cry ng mga Israelite. So what he did, he sent Aaron and also Moses for them to convey a message so that the people of Israel can be delivered. Pero nung unang punta nyo doon, ayaw maniwala ng Pharaoh. So ayaw na maniwala ng Pharaoh. Sabi na, babalik kami dito. At sinabi ng Lord, magsesend ako ng plagues. That's why doon pumasok yung plagues. At yung plagues na to is both judgment to the Egyptians and also a demonstration of God's power. So meaning, for the Egyptians, it's a judgment. Pero for the Israelites and also for the next generation, for them to understand the power and the supremacy of God over everything. Yun po yung heart ni Lord. I-deliver niya to para makilala nila na si Lord ay supreme to everything. Pero, hindi lang po yun. If you're gonna try to look at Exodus chapter 7 to Exodus chapter 11, ang heart ni Lord is for they, that they may know that I am the Lord. Nothing else, nothing more. That's why, he sent what we call plagues. And not only that, alam niyo po ba yung plagues na yon? is somehow related to all of us. Kasi yung plagues na yon, sa bawat plagues na dinadala ni Lord at that time, meron po yung ka, meron pong counter, uh, counter, ka-counter yon sa mga gods ng Egyptians. And yung mga gods ng Egyptians, ito po yung worship nila, ito yung practices na ginagawa nila to the point that they, are, they didn't know that they are in slavery of God. Yung gods po, ito yung maliit na G-O-D. At tayo rin po, to be honest, meron din po tayo mga gods sa buhay natin. Na we feel like, ah, hindi naman applicable sa akin yan, yung, sli- yung mga gods na yan. No, if you're gonna try to look at it, meron po tayong mga tinatawag na idols, which is like gods in our life. Pag sinati natin yung idol, anything that takes the place of God in our hearts and lives. Ito po yung mga bagay na we feel like nagiging functional savior ng buhay natin. Ito yung mga pursuit wherein we feel like dito nakadepende yung security natin, dito nakadepende yung identity natin, dito nakadepende even yung tinatawag nating happiness. Hindi na po kay Jollibee. So ano ba to? Maybe it could be materialism and, uh, and possessions. Your life is identified in terms of possessions. And not only that, maybe success, achievements in life. Na doon ka na lang nakafocus sa success mo at naniniwala ka, I am the man. And not only that, ikaw na yung all-knowing. May kakilala ba yung kaibigan na ganon? Yung all-knowing, pag nakita mo, pag may sinabi ka, ang dami niyang sinasabi. Yung dami, ito lang naman gusto ko malamat, ang dami mo sinasabi, living, uh, living Britannica ka ba? Tinalo mo pa si Kuya Kim. And not only that, sometimes yung God mo is relationship. I cannot live without Him. Mamamatay ako pag hindi ko siya nakita. Hindi ko siya makaya i-let go. Hoy, hello, iho, two years old ka pa lang. <laughs> or maybe some of you here in terms of power and control. You have all the authority, you have all the power wherein you are lording over to other people. 
or maybe technology and entertainment. Ito na po yung ano, wala ka nang ginawa, itatayo mo yung phone mo yun at magsasayaw ka na. <laughs> Tapos, nakasampung ulit ka na para sa'yo hindi pa rin maganda. <laughs> Pag walang nag-like, feeling mo na nakawa ka ng sampung milyon. Or some, maybe, in terms of self-image or what we call beauty. You are so obsessed with yourself. Or maybe some addictions that you cannot let go. Or even religious legalism. These are the different gods Now we feel like wala po tayo. These are the different gods that we feel like hindi naman nawawala si Lord. But in reality, if we're going to try to look at it, it's taking the place of God in our hearts. Now, the question is, do you believe or obey and trust a generic God of the earth or the God of the Bible? Will you allow that generic God to overrule your life knowing that in the whole context of Exodus, he is saying that I am the Lord God. Last week, Pastor Angelo shared the different plagues. The first three plagues na sinabi ni Pastor Angelo, this is all the plagues, water turned to blood, frogs, the gnats or lice. And then also the text, and also the God that they're serving. First is happy, responsible for, for, um, responsible for the annual flooding of the river. Ito po yung nagkakaroon ng nourishment yung land nila. Kapag nagkaroon ng nourishment yung land nila, ang nangyayari po dito, lalo lumalago for them. Next is frog, which is the, the, the God with a headed frog, which is a heket, the frog-headed God, goddess associated with fertility and childbirth. And finally, you nuts, which is a God nila is a geb, na associated naman to in terms of dust and the ground. For them, these are the things that they are worshipping and these are the, the, the gods that they feel like will lead them to success. Pero, sabi niya ni Pastor Angelo, at the end of the day, God is powerful over those things. And as we continue, we will look at the other six gods that is associated with the, the next six plagues na meron dito. To summarize everything, kasi po from chapter 8, uh, verse 20 to, hanggang chapter 12, verse 29 to, uh, uh, chapter 10, verse 29, ganun kahaba yung text na, isa-summarize na po natin dito. So, eto po yung mga nangyari ng mga plagues pa, right, after these three plagues. First is the flies. In Exodus chapter 8, verse 20, to 32, ang God na pinoproclaim dito were in nagkaroon ng flies kasi ayaw makinig ni, ayaw makinig ni Pharaoh. Nung ayaw makinig ni Pharaoh, ayaw niyang pala, 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 patakasin at paalisin yung mga Israelites, nagpadala ulit ng plague si God through uh, Moses. Eto naman, ang nangyari dito, maraming flies na pumunta were in for them, meron, si God, meron silang God na sinasamba na si Carefree, whatever the God is that, ito yung God na, na yung ulo naman niya is like a fly na associated in terms of creation and transformation. So for them, nung sinend yung flies, alam nila na ang heart ni Lord is para baliin yung gods nila na at the end of the day, yung God no is not the same kung sino ako. And right after that, nagkaroon naman ng livestock disease. Exodus chapter 9, verse 1 to 17, Hathor, wherein eto naman associated to sa mga livestock nila, yung mga cows, namatay lahat yung cows. Pero at the end of the day, ayaw pa rin pakawalan ni Pharaoh yung mga Israelites. Then after that, nagkaroon ng boils. Eto po yung mga, um, ano tawag sa Tagalog nito? Pigsa. 
malalaki at sinabi doon kahit sa parte ng mukha nila at ng katawan nila in in hope eto naman for them naniniwala sa kanila na eto yung god nila na maghihil sa kanila na eto yung god of medicine at associated to sa pag heal para sa kanila and the next three ver- next three um, plagues yung hail which is Exodus chapter 9 verse 13 to 35 which is not, eto naman yung God of sky and set, God of storm. So meaning, sinasabi niya dito na at the end of the day, meron pa rin kaming God na kayang tumapat dyan. Then, the, the next plague, which is lo, lo, Locus, Exodus chapter 10, verse 1 to 2, which is mean as a serapis, which is associated naman siya ng fertility ng agriculture to the point na kapag fertility of agriculture, kahit anong pest, walang mangyayari. Yun yung pinapaniwalaan nila. And finally, yung darkness. This is the second to the last plague. We're in Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 to 29. Sira naman to, na w- ang description of the Son of God as well of Horus, the God of light. For them, even there's darkness, they can cry on to Ra and to Horus. But the funny thing about it is that the Egyptian gods failed to save, protect, and deliver the Egyptian people from plagues. Instead, God's people experience His grace. Sa lahat ng plagues na sinend ni God through Moses and also Aaron, hindi nakaligtas ang Egyptians. But continuously, merong pumapalit na plagues. Pero, yung chosen people niya was just the Israelites. They did not experience that, but they experienced the grace of God in their lives. That's why, what we're going to do right now, we will look at three biblical truths on how God extended that grace to His people. And I really believe that grace that was extended to the Israelites is the same grace that God is extending to all of us. The first thing that I really want you to understand is that God's repeated warnings and opportunities for redemption. And repeat that. God's repeated warnings and opportunities for redemption. When we talk about redemption, it refers of the act of God to deliver the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, in Egypt leading them to freedom and ex- for them to experience a new life. Ayun yung redemption. Di ba normally, narinig natin ang redemption na word kapag meron ka, kunyan, nagpunta ka ng, nagpunta ka ng Tom's World, nagpunta ka ng Time Zone, meron kang i-redeem. Di ba, magkukulik ka ng ticket, it could be e-ticket, o kaya manual, uh, uh, anong pangalan na ito? Yung ticket na ticket talaga, yung physical ticket. Tapos mag-iipon ka, 10,000, 1,000, uh, 35, tapos mag-exchange ka ng candy. That is redemption. Pero the redemption that was talking about this, in this passage, is not just an ordinary de- redemption. We are talking about for them to be delivered. For them to experience freedom for them to get out of slavery, for them to have a new life. If you're gonna try to look at the different verses, sinama ko na po dyan lahat, Exodus 8.20, Exodus 9.1, Exodus 9.13, Exodus 10.3, eto po yung mga command ni Jesus to Aaron and Moses to go out there and tell them, let my people go. Repeatedly, paulit-ulit. The Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, the Lord says to Moses, go to Pharaoh. The Lord says, go to, go to Pharaoh and tell them, let my people go. This is the constant instruction of God to Moses and Aaron to let my people go as they go to Pharaoh. Paulit-ulit po. And look at, look at how Pharaoh responded to it. Nakakatawa po yung, yung response ni Pharaoh kasi ang response niya parati po naga-harden yung heart niya at hindi niya nile-let go yung mga tao but Pharaoh hardened his heart Pharaoh sent and behold nakalagay doon Pharaoh was hardened 
in Exodus chapter 9, verse 7, Exodus chapter 9, 12, but the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Exodus chapter 10, verse 1, the Lord said, go to the Pharaoh, I have hardened his heart. If you're going to try to look at it, meron mga time wherein God is the one who's hardening the heart of Pharaoh. And there are passages na walang sinabi na si God yung nag-harden ng, ng heart ng, ni, ni Pharaoh. The reason behind that is for us to understand the supremacy of Christ, of the supremacy of God. The intention is for those people, not just the Israelites, but even the Egyptians, to understand the power and the authority of, Christ, of, of God in everything. I heard this story. Meron isang preacher daw, may isang preacher na Egyptian, pastor. Then, siyempre, kapag Egyptian ka, eh, tas ito yung pag-uusapan mo, tas uusapan mo yung lahi mo, parang ang hirap naman yata nun. Yung lahi ko na, nag, 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 ano, na slavery, na, 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 na may gantong history. Pero you know what? Sabi niya, yes, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, but because the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, we were able to understand who, true, who, who is the true God. Because for them, yung mga gods, maliit na G-O-D, yun po yung winning worship nila back then. So two things yan. Hinarden ni Lord para maintindihan ng Egyptian at meron din moment si Pharaoh na naharden yung heart niya because of what he is saying. And not only that, the funny thing about Pharaoh, he also acknowledged his sin. Acknowledgements of Pharaoh's sin. If you're going to try to look at Exodus chapter 9, 27, and Exodus 10, 16 to 17, sabi niya dito, Then Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and, and said to them, This time I have sinned. The Lord is, the, is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Inacknowledge na nagkamali siya, nagsisin sa kay God, pero alam niyo po ba pagkatapos niyan? Partial acknowledgement yon. Ang ginawa niya, I don't want them to be released again. At naulit yun, Exodus chapter 10, verse 16, 17. Sabi niya dito, Then Pharaoh hastily called Moses and Aaron and said, I have sins against the Lord, your God, and against you. Now therefore forgive my sin, please only this once, and plead with the Lord, your God, only to remove this debt from me. Try to imagine with me. He's talking to Aaron and also Moses telling to them, I acknowledge my sin and I'm so sorry, but I will not let them go. If you're going to try to look at it, we're like that. God is in the business of reaching us out. And most of the time, we have so many excuses. Even si Lord, ang heart niya is for us to be redeemed. Even yung heart ni Lord is for us to experience a new life. Try to imagine with me. Naalala ko back then, no, hindi pa ako krasyano, ang dami kong mga pinagagawa sa buhay ko na hindi nakaka-honor kay God. Sa sobrang yabang ko, kinakalaban ko kung sino-sino, hindi ako nakikinig kung kanin-kanino. And every time na merong magre-reach out sa akin, parati ko sinasabi, kasi time ko yun na, hindi, yung mga next generation dito, hindi nyo itong masyado ma-relate, sabihin ko sa kanila, ayoko sa mga mga alive-alive yan eh. Alive, alive, alive. Tapos may Tagalog pa ng Tagalog. Buhay, buhay, buhay kailan pa man. Si Jesus ay buhay. Diba? May ganun. Alam nyo, to be honest, ganyan din tayo. How many of you here, okay, maging honest tayo ah, merong taong gusto mag-share sa'yo, pero tinakasan mo, taas ang kamay. Yan. Sige lang, huwag kayo maya. O yung ibang babait, talaga hindi kayo tumakas. Naalala ko back then, meron akong dinidisciple. Tapos yung dinidisciple ko, ano siya, ang dami niyang vices sa, sa buhay, most especially when it comes to his, to his, ano, when it comes to his education. Ano lang po siya, uh, United Colors of School. 
So, ibig sabihin, palipat-lipat, nakikig out dito, hindi natatapos lang ito, tapos nina-reach out ko po sa, tapos nung nakausap ko siya, youth service, so, kung nagkwentuhan kami, tapos, eto na yung matindi. Every time na mag-start yung youth service, hindi ko siya nakikita. Pero, pag praise and worship na, dahil nasa harapan ako, makikita ko nasa likuran na siya. Tapos, pag natapos yung praise and uh, preaching, mawawala na naman siya. The reason why umaalis siya at bumabalik, umaalis siya na maaga kasi ayaw niya ako makita. Ayaw niya ako lapitan ko siya at kamustahin ko siya at ma-share ko si Lord sa kanya. Pero the funny thing about it, from out of nowhere, bigla na lang kami nagkikita sa isang place. Nagulat ako. Even in Commonwealth, nakita ko siya doon tapos iba na yung number niya. Tapos hingin ko na ng number niya, tapos mag-chat ko na naman siya. Tapos kung saan kami nakikita, hanggang sa moment, sumuko na siya, at yun. Sabi niya, sige na nga, Pastor Christian, magkita na tayo. Maraming moments sa buhay natin, ganyan tayo. Huwag kayong, huwag kayong ano, di ba? <laughs> Naniniwala ako dito, marami moment where in pasaway talaga tayo. To the point na alam mo, kasi ayaw mo ng new life. Gusto mo dito, uy, sarap dito, mainit. Masaya, may happiness, may beer, may mga ganito, may kung ano-ano. Lima, boy, lima boyfriend ko, lima girlfriend ko. Nanonood ako ng ganito, ang saya-saya, enjoy na enjoy. So, nag enjoy ka pa. Kung baga, nag enjoy ka sa wilderness. Woo! Saya-saya! Pero, <laughs> pero, in reality, habang sumasaya at habang may nagre-reach out sa iyo, alam mong nangungusap na si Lord sa iyo. Pero ayaw mo lang. But I want you to understand, God never stops reaching us out and giving us opportunities to go back to Him and be reconciled with Him. I don't know about you. Salamat Lord, hindi ka sumuko. Come on now. Tingin ka sa tabi mo. Sabi mo sa tabi mo, hindi susuko si Lord sa iyo. And that is the grace of God. Unmerited favor. Ibig sabihin po, hindi tayo karapat dapat i-reach out ni Lord, pero yung pagmumukhang yan, tingin ka sa tabi mo. Para kay Lord, valuable yan. Yes! Talaga naman kay yes talaga. <laughs> and this next thing that I really want to share to everyone is God's protection and favor to His people. Why? There's several verses in that passage wherein God's protection and favor towards His people. Why? Kasi po, anong nangyari dito? If you're gonna try to look at this verse, Exodus chapter 8.22, Exodus chapter 9.4, Exodus 9.26, Exodus 10.23, lahat po ito, ito po yung plagues na na-experience ng Egyptians. Pero, if you will continue reading this passage in verse 8.22, but on the day, I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people dwell so that no swarms of flies shall be there, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Even my flies at that time, sa Egypt, at yung small portion which is Goshen, kung saan nandun yung mga Israelite part din ng Egypt, hindi po sila nagkakaroon ng flies. And not only that, Exodus chapter 9 verse 4, but the Lord will make a distinction between a life, li- livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt so that nothing of all that belongs to the people of Israel shall die. Imagine, namatay lahat ng livestock ng Egyptians, pero sa kanila, not even a single one. Exodus chapter 9, verse 26, Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. Grabe, no? Antin din nun. And finally, Exodus chapter 10, verse 23, They did not see one another, nor did not anyone rise from the, his place for three days. But all the people of Israel had light where they live. Ito po yung may darkness. Pero sa lugar nila, meron pong tinatawag na ilaw. Siguro meron silang generator. Si Lord ang generator nila. If you will try to look at it, there are two particular words that hit sa akin. First is the word 
set apart. Second is the word, make a distinction. Grabe lang si Lord. The heart of God is for Him to set apart the people, people to experience that plague so that they can experience God's protection. And not only that, sabi dyan, make a distinction. Make a distinction. Meaning, God is telling to the Israelites that they are the chosen people and this is their identity. Says there, set apart and make, and make a distinction. So if you're going to try to look at it, in Egypt, the plagues brought widespread of devastation and suffering to the Egyptians. The plagues served as judgment against Egypt's oppression and idolatry. But for Goshen, which is the Israelites, remained relatively untouched and mostly spared from the devastating effects of plagues. And also, God's grace, protection were evident in Goshen, highlighting God's role as the protector and deliverer of the Israelites. This is the grace of God. We don't deserve protection. We don't deserve even to be highlighted and to be covered by God. To be honest, hindi naman kailangan eh. Kasi sino ba naman tong Israelite? Makasalanan din to. Pero at the end of the day, God identified them as the chosen people and I really believe God is also identifying us that we are sons and daughters of God. So meaning, the shield of protection and also the shield wherein that covers us, ayun po yung covering na meron tayo. So that every day we can declare that we are protected by God and we will never be put into shame or harm. I don't know about you. I remember there was one story. There's one wedding na kakilala po namin. Tapos tong wedding na to, sa Batangas. Tapos yung sa wedding nila, grabe lang yung season at that time kasi nagdidrizzle yung ulan. So they feeling nila hindi na siya uulan. Ay, hindi na tutuloy yung ulan. Tapos ay, ang dami nilang bisita, nasa 200 plus. Tapos, now, people are really praying. Tapos dumadating yung mga kotse, basang-basa. Tapos meron yung isang ninang na punta doon, pagdating doon sabi, ano ba yun? Grabe naman yung bagyo dito. Ang lakas-lakas. So, yung mga dinaanan nila na, bag, na, na place, north, east, south, and west. Tama ba yung ginawa ko? No. <laughs> north, east, west, and south. So, ano nangyari dito? Lahat yun. Yung buong paligid pala, bumabagyo, pero yung wedding, hindi binabagyo. And that is a protection and a favor and a grace God has given to that couple. I don't know about you. Miracle ni Lord yun. And naniniwala ko, kung may business ka, you can appropriate that protection for your business. At naniniwala ko, kung meron kang mga anak dito, you can tell them that God is protecting them. Even sa mga langaw. Even sa mga insects. My prayer is that we never forget that there is a sufficient grace in our weakness. His grace is made perfect for all of us. That's why wherever you will go, I'm telling you, God's shield of protection is with you. The Bible is so confident telling us that God is omnipresent. Meaning, kahit kasam pumunta, na andun ang Panginoon. He's willing to protect you. I wrote here, God is separating and delivering us from slavery so that we can experience His promise, His favor, 
and His protection. I don't know about you. I'm excited to experience God's protection and even appropriate God's protection in my life. And finally, as we end, God's faithfulness to fulfill His promise. What we're going to do, we're going to go back to Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6, it says here, verse 2 to, 2 to 3, sabi niya dito, God spoke to Moses, I'm the Lord, I, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land which they live as sojourners. If we're going to try to look at it, sinabi niya dito na God has a covenant. This covenant that God has for the Israelite was established even in times of Abraham, of Isaac, and even Jacob. When God remembered that covenant that he has for the Israelite, he is the one who said that I will let my people go. He's the one who said that I will deliver them. He's the one who said that I will bring them to the land of milk and honey. Ayun po yung promise ng Panginoon. Ang promise ng Panginoon, at the end of the day, he will fulfill it because he has this covenant with him. Covenant is not just an ordinary paper that na normally nakikita natin sa wedding. Covenant is a promise of God, is a commitment of God to His people. Commitment that He will fulfill every promise He has given Him. You may promise from one descendant to the other, from one generation to other, He will fulfill it. Yun yung promise ng Panginoon. Kaya no one can ever depict or even cut off and even uh, take away that covenant God has for all of us. Kasi, ang tunay po niyan, if we're gonna go to Revelation, tayo po ay mga bride ni Lord. Meaning, ikinasal po tayo kay God and that covenant that we have with Him, He will fulfill it. If you're gonna try to look at it, marami pong tao ngayon pakuna sa mga promises. Pakuna sa mga promises na mamahalin kita, tas iniwang ka. Pakuna sa mga sabi, okay, magkakaroon to ng interest na 5% per annum, okay, lakihan natin 15% per annum, pero ano na, ilang years na, kahit 0%, wala. Kahit 0.001, wala. O iba dito, nangako sa'yo na, okay, sige, ganito gagawin natin, uh, papangungawa kita, basta ibigay mo lang sa akin, bibigay ko rin sa'yo lahat. O yung nangako ka, sige, lilibre kitang kwekwek, hanggang ngayon, isang kwekwek, wala pa. O yung nangako sa'yo na bibilang kita ng ganito, bibigay ko langit at lupa, ipagsasaklob natin, hanggang makita mo, mahal mo talaga ako. Turo mo yung mga stars, isa dyan, ibibigay ko sa'yo. Marami na po, napako sa mga pangako. Marami na po nasaktan sa mga pa, pangakong pinangako pero hindi naman tinutupad. Even your wives or even your husband, your daughter, your relatives can miss a single promise. Why? Because we're limited. But one thing I like about this passage, His promise, God's promise for everyone is established already in His covenant. Meaning, He will fulfill every promise God has for you. The question is, will you appropriate it? Panghahawakan mo ba ito? Panghahawakan mo ba yung mga promises ni Lord? The Bible is telling us, no matter how many promises God has made, there are yes and amen are being spoken with God. The question is, are you agreeing? Yung yes, kay Lord yun, pero ang tanong, nag amen ka ba? Alam ba ni Lord, yung mga pangangailangan mo? Yes, alam niya, pero ang tanong, inaas mo ba? Remember, God's grace is evident in His faithfulness to His covenant and His heart to bring His people out of slavery. If you are in a position wherein you feel like there's so many gods in your life, 
This is the grace that God has for you. He has a covenant that He will let you experience freedom and He will let you experience a new life. If you're going to try to look at the different flags, the flights, which is associated with creation and transformation. But I want you to understand God is in control over insects. Kahit pa yung best friend mong ipis na nagpapanggap na butterfly. <laughs> Livestock and disease, which is associated with cows, I want you to understand that God's power over Egypt's wealth and fertility. You're going to try to look at boils, which is for them, meron silang God. I want you to understand God's control over health and disease. He is our mighty healer. And not only that, if you're going to try to look at the hail, which is gods of storms and gods of sky, I want you to understand God controls over the nature. If you're going to try to look at the locus, which is associated with fertility and agriculture, at the end of the day, I want you to know that God controls over food resources. He can multiply. He can do something about it. And finally, in terms of darkness, which the sun and God, or God of light, I want you to understand God's power over light and darkness. Sinabi nga niya, I am the light of life. But the great thing about these things that God is telling to all of us that He is the Lord, your God. Wala pong power yung maliliit na Gina gods sa buhay natin. Because His grace is so sufficient for us to overcome. And don't forget that 2,000 plus years ago, the Bible is telling us in John chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, for from His fullness, we have all received. Can you just say, all received? Grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ died on that cross, we can appropriate tetelestai, meaning we are victorious over the small gods in our life. Come on now. And the grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. That's why we can enjoy our relationship with God. That's why we can appropriate the promises of God in our life. And finally, it says in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, sabi niya dito, for the grace of God has appeared. Ibig po sabihin dito, for the grace of God has appeared. It's all about the mission of Jesus for all of us. He came here to seek and save the lost. He came here in order for us to understand and know that He has the power and authority over our lives. And not only that, the very reason He came here is for us to experience and for Him to bring salvation to everyone. Lahat po tayo dito, we need a Savior. Lahat po tayo dito, may iniiyak tayo sa Panginoon. Lahat po tayo dito, may pinagdadaanan. It could be anger management. It could be simple as, as your insecurities in life na sobrang nag-create ng too much chaos in your life. But I want you to understand that Jesus came here so that we will experience deliverance from anything that we have that doesn't honor God. It could be sin, and it could be unwise decision, or it could be the things that destroys us. But I want you to understand, He's going to be here, or He came here to bring salvation. To whom? It says there, for all the people. It's for free. It's for all of us. It's for all of us to experience 
the grace that God has for us. He died on that cross by grace, and through faith, we can declare that we are saved. Can I ask everyone to stand up? Let me end with this one. I don't know what is happening to you. I don't know what are the small gods that you have or battling with that you feel like, Lord, this is my cry. I want to be delivered. This is my cry. I don't want to dwell and I don't want to be in this slavery again. I want to be set free. I want to have a new life. You know what? No matter how hard you try on your own doings, on your own capacity, on your own abilities, hindi po kayo makakalis sa slavery na yan. But the good news is, God, Jesus Christ, can set you free. And His grace is so sufficient. I put here, God's grace is extended to anyone who places their faith in Jesus Christ. A powerful declaration of God's love and His desire for all to experience salvation by grace. We can only experience that freedom, that salvation by the grace of God. Hindi tayo karapat dapat, pero willing pa rin ang Panginoon, maset ka paalis. The only way out or the only road out for you not to be enslaved of the small gods is through Christ Jesus our Lord. We're going to take this time to allow God to minister to all of us. I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads. If you are here, you know in yourself na si Lord kinakausap ka. At as you evaluate yourself, alam mo may mga God sa buhay mo. Naniniwala ka pa rin kung saan-saan na nagiging functional saver mo. Ito yung pinupuntahan mo more than God. Ito yung pinanghahawakan mo. It could be a promise. Or it could be an amulet. Or it could be something that has happened to you. Or something na until now, yung pa rin paniniwala mo. But right now, you're saying, Lord, I want to lay it down to you. But this time, I want to fix my eyes on you, the author and perfecter of my faith. I want to hold on that you are the God who can set me free from this slavery. If that is you, no looking around. If you're asking, Lord, I need that grace. I want to be set free from this God. I want you to raise your hand and let me pray for you. God says the hand. God says the hand. It could be seen until now. Paulit ulit pa rin ng yayare. God says the hand. I want you to start talking to God and say, "Sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dito pa rin nakalagay yung sarili ko sa mga idols. Lord, thank you for these people assembling themselves before you, sharing. Lord, I don't want this God anymore. The small G." But I want to experience the power in your name. That through Jesus Christ, I know I can be saved. I know that I can be set free. Right now, God, I'm laying down everything to you on the feet of the cross, appropriating it is done. Appropriating that I am a new creation, the old has gone and the new has come appropriating that I will not do these things anymore by grace, appropriating that I will not dwell in this small God and not even entertain this small God. But thank you because it will never be about our abilities, but it will always be about the grace that is so sufficient that you have for us. You may put down your hands. In my name, Jesus, amen. Look up here. Finally, it's going to be hard for you to experience the grace of God. Like what I've said, 
if you will not put your faith in Him, the author and perfecter of your faith. Alam niyo po ba, sometimes as a Filipino, it's so easy for us to say, I have a relationship with God because I know Him. Pero in reality, knowing is totally different from having a relationship with Him. I may know Justin Bieber, but I don't have a relationship with Justin Bieber. I may know a celebrity, but I may not have a relationship with that celebrity. But I know JV, I know Pastor Angelo, I have a relationship with them. I know Gian. And I, and I, I can enjoy the relationship that I have with them. We can laugh together, we can eat together, and we can pray together because I have a relationship with them. With them. But the question is, how about you? Do you know God? Do you just know God? Or do you have a relationship with Him? The Bible is telling us the reason why there's plagues is for Him to be known in our hearts. I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads. If you are here, you want to have a real relationship with God, not just by knowing Him or not just by saying, I know God, but a real encounter. And you know God is touching your heart right now, saying, my son and my daughter, I want to have a relationship with you. I want you to experience the love that I have for you. I want you to know that I have a vision for you. I want you to know, experience the plans that I have for you. And I want you to appropriate the very purpose that I have for you as well. If that is you, without any hesitation, by faith, I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you. In the count of three, one, two, three, raise your hands. God is the hand. Wow. God is the hand. God is the hand. God is the hand. Okay, you may put down your hands. Look up here. For those people who raise their hands, I'm going to throw um, a, not, a, not a challenge, but an act of faith. I want you to go here in front, bring your things, ko hindi kayo comfortable. Just bring your things, go here in front as an act of faith. Lord, I want you. Just go here. Do those people who raise their hands? There's so many people who raise their hands. Kung meron kayong kasama, sabihin mo, samahan kayo dito. Yeah. Come here. Don't be shy. I know there's more. This is an opportunity that God is giving you. You mga nasa side, you know what? Ginawa ko rin to. The only difference, umiiyak ako. Mayroon ako na experience. May natitikman ako maalat-alat, matamis-tamis. Kasi lahat na. Just go here, in front. Don't be shy. Come here. Yeah, just go here. Thank you, Jesus. Wait, ito po yung pinakamahirap kasi sa akin. Iyakin na kasi ako eh. Um, there's more. Let me just say, congratulations. Okay. Move na konti. Move kayo na konti. Let me just say, congratulations. Why? Because... This is the best decision ever na ginawa ninyo. When I surrender my life to God, after that, my life has never been the same again. And this is what we're going to do. For those people at the back, we just uh, extend our hands to them. And for those people who are here in front, can you just raise your hand to God as a sign of surrender? And I want to like you to pray after me, Lord. Thank you for bringing me in this place. I know it's not an accident, but you called me to be here so that I will experience you, not just by name. Lord, I'm sorry for all the things that I've done in the past. And right now, I surrender my life to you. Be in control of my life. Be my Lord, be my Master, and I appropriate that I am a new creation. The old has gone, and the new has come. Lord, may you bless them. May you acknowledge the faith that they have with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. For those people who 
Raise your hand. Just give us five minutes. Uh, Gian, Gian, come here, Gian. This Gian. He will just explain to you kung ano yung decision na ginawa ninyo. Just go in there, here inside. Five minutes lang po para at least ma-explain that. For those people can just raise your hand. Let me just pray for everyone. The Bible is telling us if there's one person, the whole, the, if there's one person depends, the whole heaven is rejoicing. There's more than one. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Salamat po for, for letting us witness your grace. Ito po mga nasa harap Panginoon is a proof of your grace. That you are in the business of reaching out to your people. Lord, I pray that you will always remind us that we can appropriate every single promise that you have for all of us. Lord, thank you because you said in your word that your grace is so sufficient and your grace is made perfect in our weaknesses, God. That's why we will never see ourselves being destroyed by small gods, God. But we will appropriate that you are the one true God in our lives. Thank you, God, for everything. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.